I'm still thinking about belief, particularly in relation to religion and science. This is a tiny thought and probably not very enlightening, <laughs> but I want to put it, you know, find a way to phrase it. But it's to do with um, that relationship between what I referred to in a previous video as A-leaves and B-leaves, or those uh, beliefs that we hold intuitively, that we feel to be true, because they're supported by sensory felt evidence. You know, I feel there is a telegraph pole there, that's true. And the authority for that belief lies in my senses and the feeling that it is there. Um, you know, the truth of the, of the visual perception that I'm having. And of course, I don't really, I don't, when I say feel, I'm not talking about some grand emotional state I have in relation to this telegraph pole. But I know if it was conclusively demonstrated that I was looking at an illusion right now, I would feel something. I would feel shock, I would feel loss, I would feel my sanity threat, something like that. So the, um, so there is an emotional component there when I'm looking at this telegraph pole, which is providing evidence for its existence, even though I don't really recognize that emotion in its absence or in its contradiction. Um, so there's that kind of um, belief, isn't there, which is evidenced by the senses. But then there's this other secondary belief, which is perhaps unfortunate shares a term, which is the um, beliefs that we hold explicitly, reflectively, the ones that we talk about, the ones that we sign up to, those kind of things, and which may not have no felt component at all, or very little at least, and they're supported not by the evidence of the senses, but by other kinds of evidence scientific evidence, empirical evidence, uh, evidence of surveys, evidence from other people, or something, you know, some other kind of, a, of, um, of an evidence process. There's, there's still evidence. And I suppose in an ideal world, everything would be um, available to both those systems. You know, all my air leaves would be supported by my bee leaves, and my bee leaves would be supported by my air leaves. So everything that I knew to be explicitly reflectively true, all the statements that I held to be true were also deeply felt truths, as, as plain as the telegraph pole in front of my face, you know. Ideally, I suppose, that would be nice, but that's not ever going to be possible, is it? Because a lot of the things that I hold to be true, and that I would say I believe in, um, are not, are never going, I'm not going to do that. You know, something as robust as evolution doesn't present itself to my senses. I can... I can start to try to develop intuitions about it, but it's really hard. It's probably as hard to develop an intuition about about evolution as it is to develop a, a feeling of the presence of God for, for evangelicals. But I know it to be true, and in a sense it doesn't really matter whether I develop a sense of that or not, whether I really feel that in my body to be true or not, because that's not where the evidence lies. No, that's not where I'm... Um, what I'm relying on as a, as a source of authority, that the evidence of my own commit of my own feelings about that is not the the evidence that provides the authority in that case. It's the, an, another kind of authority. Uh, yeah, there's something. It's quite interesting. Things happen, isn't it, when there's these, this disconnect. Let me just rewind a little bit, because sometimes our our stated explicit beliefs are in contrast or even contradiction to our felt beliefs, aren't they? Um, like, just to return to the telegraph pole example, I know that a telegraph pole is supposedly mostly space. You know, it's a buzzing cloud of atoms, whatever it is, that Deepak Chopra said. It's one of those kind of things, isn't it, really? And um, all its visual and tactile properties are results of electromagnetic or whatever forces engaging with my sensory organs and the environment around me. This is how this is how sensors that image there is how my sensory system interprets the um, the forces of nature that are at work. But I but and I kind of know that explicitly to the extent that I can try to phrase it in sentences. But of course, that's not what I see, and must not what I experience. What I experience, what I what I air leave to be true but I intuitively believe that there's a solid object over there carved out of a tree. Um, so as I say, sometimes they're in kind of contradistinction, um, but uh, at other times 
you just get the one without the other. You get the explicit belief based in evidence and the authority of empirical evidence, but having no correlate in the authority of one's own senses. Sometimes some things are just abstract, you know, and you can't rely on your senses to provide emotional embodied support for those beliefs. And probably belief is the wrong word in that case. Well, it's actually not the wrong word, it's a fine word, sorry, but but I know one of the um, one of the reasons why um, scientists, for example, tend to avoid the word belief when referring to theories, like the theory of evolution, is because it too easily falls back into that other meaning of belief, which I'm referring to as early or intuitive belief. It too easily falls back into those kind of claims. And they'd rather use a word like accept. You accept the truth of evolution, not because it's making a sensory appeal to your um, to your body, so you can feel it to be literally true. But it's uh, it's true whether you whether you have that feeling or not, because you accept the evidence which supports that idea. You accept the authority of that evidence, impersonal, transparent, open to scrutiny, um, not reliant on the individual authority of, an, of one body, however motivated by feeling it might be. Um, so yeah, as opposed to faith, I suppose, which is the correlate, wouldn't it? Because if you're a faith person, then you might say, well, I don't, um, I believe in God, but I have no evidence for his presence. I don't even have the, um, you know, like Mother Teresa, I might um, have never felt God in my life, but nevertheless, I still believe in God. That's the kind of faith position as well, isn't it? So, um, what a religious person might call faith, a um, scientifically-minded person might call acceptance, but they are different, because one does have appeal to uh, evidence and the other appeals to scripture. And the motivation for a religiously-inspired person will be to try to bring their felt sense of the presence of God into their lives. There's no demand like that on um, a scientifically-minded empirical oriented belief person is there really as I say it might be nice if you kind of felt the truth of evolution but it's probably as many drawbacks as there are advantages to that it's just not required really it's not required any more than it's required that you bring the the truth of a safety of a roller coaster ride into your roller coaster ride can't kind of defeat the point really it just is safe the evidence for its safety is what you need in order to be able to relax the, to suspend your disbelief that you're going to die whilst you're actually on the ride itself in order to gain some kind of enjoyment from the playfulness inherent in that kind of belief that's open, that's only available to you because you have a reflective belief to contrast it to. Anyway, enough of that. Thank you very much.